So kick it out to a charity. Um, uh, so we represent beneficiaries and our beneficiaries are underrepresented or minority communities in football. And our vision is to make football a game where everyone feels that they belong and to eradicate discrimination. So that's our remit. It's a broad remit, but that, those are the people we represent and that's what we are seeking to do. So we've just undertaken a governance review, strategic review, new CEO. I've been in place for uh, 18 months or so as a new chair. So really it's about executing on the new strategy. The, the, the main central pillar of that, I suppose, is to seek to act as a galvanizing force, a sort of hub for inclusive change in football. And that was part of a deliberate strategy because Having gone out and spoken to 200 odd people and 300 odd people maybe in, in, in football, we felt that's actually what football needed. You know, it's to, football's a distributed power network. There's a lot of influence in football, but it's actually at the club level and they're the, they're the key conduit out to people like me as fans. And so I think our job is to engage that and not to try and do everything at the centre. Uh, we've got three key pillars around which we're going to be providing um, uh, programs and services. Campaigning and reporting, so transparency reporting around discrimination, uh, inclusion and some other areas around, around reporting. Campaigning around areas of public policy, we're doing a lot around the Football Leadership Diversity Code to create targets for representation. Uh, working a lot around online hate. Online hate is our number one priority at the moment and some broader campaigns, particularly around Take a Stand, uh, which uh, focus on really activating individuals. Uh, there'll be probably a couple of other working groups that we will we will also create around things like anti-Semitism and uh, South Asian uh, inclusion. Uh, the sort of second pillar of what we do is around guidance and education and uh, you know, a variety of things that we do there, including educating kids in the academies from 9 to 23 and their parents, plus also fan rehabilitation. So if fans are found guilty of an act of discrimination, we will often do the rehab training with them where we explain to them the impacts of their behaviour. And then the final pillar really is around talent and how we work together with all of the football stakeholders in in creating the sort of talent pathways for everything off the pitch really or the peripheral careers around football or other than on the pitch um, for people from underrepresented or minority communities so that football can keep its promises to uh, diversify its workforce. Point in history where we have a lot of things going on and uh, we have a lot of social change and, and not just with the pandemic but some of the changes that have been happening across the world in geopolitical terms and sort of polarised between open and closed and economic polarisation. I think what football can be is a beacon. It can be a beacon of hope and a beacon of change because nothing unites people like sport and nothing unites people in sport, in my opinion and my experience, like football. Nothing can create those moments of unity. Um, there's, there's nothing like this country like when the England team is doing well, Euro 96, you know, I was lucky enough to be there for most of those games and also in Moscow for the semi-final in the, the World Cup a few years ago and seeing the, the atmosphere as well back home here in England. So that's the hope for me and that's the optimism is football can be a, a, a unifying beacon of hope for the rest of society.